YouTube, it's Ben here with the 60 gallon cichlid tank. And today let's talk about water. Water, what makes up the water in your cichlid tank? Let's talk a little bit about that and uh, get an understanding of what the heck is going on in there, okay? All right, thanks. Thanks for tuning in and let's get started. The reason I started my tank with this particular substrate consisting mostly of shells clams, oyster shells, crushed coral. The reason I started my tank with this was for buffering. But what does that mean? What does buffering mean? What does it mean to have hard water? And how does that uh, relate to pH, to the pH of your tank? And also, um, why? Why would this actually make a difference on pH? You know, uh, a lot of us do tests, like me. We do tests, but do we know what those tests mean? Do we know what uh, they're actually measuring? Well, let's take a look and, and uh, I've done a little recent research, gotten a little better understanding. I wanna share that with you. Maybe it'll help you in controlling the parameters of your tank. When you have hard water, what that means is that your water contains minerals, in particular, calcium and magnesium. That makes your water hard. Now, in California, we have, or at least in Southern California, we have pretty hard water right out of the tap. That makes it pretty ideal for cichlid keepers. pH, however, can be as low as 7, 7.2, maybe 7.5. So in my case, I chose to add additional minerals, the minerals that leach from things like shells, to help increase the amount of uh, calcium, magnesium, in the water. Now why would that affect pH? What calcium magnesium does is when acidic acid gets in the water and acid, acid gets in the water in the form of nitrate, nitric acid, that is the end product of the cycle, right? Right, you have nitrate, that's nitric acid. As that acid tries to lower the pH of your tank, Minerals actually neutralize or buffer that acid. So you want to have minerals in your water. So that minerals provided from limestone or in some cases, some people told me lava rock can help. I'm not sure about the lava rock, but certainly coral and shells. In some cases, you can add, some people add minerals to their water. They add, uh, baking powders or they'll add other types of they'll add salt things that add mineral to the water and so that when acid is created it actually gets buffered by these minerals neutralized and your pH stays high now more most commonly minerals are replaced with water changes so if you wait a long time between water changes, those suspended minerals will no longer be suspended. They'll actually start to settle in your tank. And if you wait too long to add minerals or to do a water change, you can have a pH crash because the nitrate will create an acid situation in your tank and drop the pH because there's, there isn't enough minerals in the water to buffer the acid, which is the byproduct of the waste. So in an ideal situation, you have pretty hard water, water that contains minerals, and you'll have a good high pH for your cichlids. I use cichlid lake salts, which together with these shells which by the way, you can use crushed coral, you can use um, uh, arap argonite, if it's pronounced correctly, substrates. There are substrates that can help with buffering. And in some cases, you might not even need to add anything to your water. But you certainly should not wait too long between water changes. You wanna keep your water clean and you wanna keep the mineral content of your water high 
because that will buffer the acid that comes with the nitrates. All right? So think of it this way. In the normal, normally cycled tank, right, you have zero ammonia, zero nitrates, but uh, I'm sorry, zero nitrites, but you're always going to have some nitrates. And those nitrates are an acidic substance that lowers your pH. So you have to have something to neutralize or buffer that. And that's where the minerals in your water do the job. All right? So if you don't have enough minerals in your water, add them. And certainly um, don't wait too long between water changes because that's normally how they're added to the tank, okay? So I hope that helped. And that's, uh, that's a little info on water and the importance of having hard water for cichlids and how that relates to pH, okay? So when you, measure, when you do your measurements and you see a GH reading, you want that GH reading to be pretty hard. That's your general hardness. GH is general hardness. Some people confuse that for some other kind of reading or German uh, reading or German hardness. No, it's general hardness, GH. You want that GH high, that'll help you to maintain a good pH. If you have a pH crash, your fish will go into distress, okay? All right, so that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that tip helps to clarify what you're looking at when you're looking at your test results. Uh, for me, it's been an educational process, and you don't need to be a chemist to keep a successful tank. But uh, I think if you were, it would help. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you so much for watching. You really appreciate it.